Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. We have a bit of an update episode today. I'm very excited. This is a traditional comment section episode, but I am going to be doing sort of a long form reaction because this video is very long, but it is so worth it, guys. It is so worth it. It is so cringe. Now, a few weeks ago, we did an episode about Miranda Sings, aka Colleen Ballinger, and the accusations made against her by her former young fans. Now, accusations of exploiting them, getting free labor for them, speaking inappropriately with them in private group chats, doing sexual things on stage with minors during her live shows, many of whom have actually now come out on TikTok and Instagram and have made videos about their experiences at those live shows saying, yes, this was really weird. We did not expect it, that kind of thing. Talking about how uncomfortable and violated they felt. So this has been going on. Honestly, it's been going on for a few years now because accusations have slowly come out, but they have really gotten the most attention this month over the last three weeks or so. And if you want to watch the full episode, if you want to catch up, it will be linked in the description below. So go catch up and then come back here because now we have an update. After weeks of waiting and then me promptly forgetting about her because I don't care about Colleen Ballinger. Colleen has a response, an apology. And we're gonna watch it today. Before we jump into it though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Alrighty, so this is the best worst apology I have ever seen on the internet. Just take out the content. Just what you're about to see is so weird. I'm very excited. It's a serious subject, but this is also just hysterical, which is kind of the problem with it. So she decided to skip the notes app post on Instagram, you know, posting cryptic quotes on her stories. She did not even do a tearful straight to camera apology video. She did this. I just, okay, before we even get into like the content of what she's about to say, she sits with a sad, Look on her face. We're about to hear a tearful apology. No, we're not. Psych. We have a ukulele of all things. Also, this like little setup here. Again, I'm going to say this so many times. This is so 2014. This is so like Colleen in her apartment playing the ukulele, about to post this on Tumblr when Taylor Swift was still active on Tumblr. Cyberbullying was much more intense. <laughs> like that is the era that I am feeling right now. And the bangs, of course, like Zoe Deschanel on steroids. All right, here we go. Sorry. Hey, it's been a while since you saw my face. I haven't been doing so great, so I took a little break. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. It doesn't matter if it's true, though. Just as long as it's entertaining to you. Right? You guys having fun? All aboard the toxic gossip train. Chugging down the tracks of misinformation. Okay, so she does not even address the situation at first. Like, this is going to be the overarching problem, that there were serious things that she was accused of. She could have a serious response, but instead of being serious and taking this seriously, how many times can I say serious in this episode, she makes an absolute mockery of the situation and herself. And before even acknowledging that anything is going on, she's turning the blame on other people. This is toxic. You just want something that's entertaining. It's a very serious thing. And you just pulled out a ukulele and are now blaming other people. It's like, come on, please. Even if you think that you did nothing wrong, be serious about it. Anyway, she's gonna keep singing. You got a one-way ticket to manipulation station. Toxic gossip train. Time me to the tracks and it's also not gossip when people have screenshots of everything that you've sent to young people. They have videos of you saying, oh, does this young boy want me to send him lingerie and then sending it to him, using him for work and not paying for him. There are videos all over the internet of you doing inappropriate things with young people online. Like, it's not gossip. People want an explanation. They don't want you to blame it on other things. Harass me for my past, because rumors look like facts. If you don't mind the gaps, I won't survive in the crash, but hey. Uh, hi, everyone. I've been wanting to come online. The interlude, the monologue in the middle. This is literally like a musical. My producer said this reminds me of Hamilton. It literally is. It's like Hamilton mixed with Les Mis mixed with YouTube in 2014. Um, even though my team has strongly advised me to not say what I want to say, I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing what I want to say. It's literally the musical pause. It's like the buzzer. But they didn't tell me I couldn't sing. Now watch me burst into song. Today I only want to talk about the facts. Good. So, I hope that you'll be willing to listen. Here we go. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way, like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way, where I was just trying to be besties with everybody. 
I would argue, maybe this is a hot take, that any adult messaging young people in group chats asking about the things that she was asking, even if she did not think that that was creepy or did not intend for it to be creepy, it's still weird and it's still inappropriate. And parents do have a right to be concerned. And kids can look back and go, oh, that was a little bit weird. Like now I'm a 30 year old and I would never say that to a young person. Like that is a normal thing to realize. It's kind of like uh, when you go to like a family gathering and there's a weird aunt there who keeps coming up to you and going like, hey girl, what's the tea? And you're like, Ugh. Um, that was me. But in group chats with my fans, it was weird. Good, she's admitting that it's weird. I've been sharing my life online for over 15 years. I've poured my heart out to you and because of that I feel like I'm talking to my friends. But in the beginning of my career, I didn't really understand that maybe there should be some boundaries there. And I think that that is an important thing to note, that she has been online for a very long time. Times have changed. The beginning of YouTube was like a lawless, terrible place. Things that happened on YouTube 15 years ago. I don't even know. I don't even want to dive into. I think it was a terrible, terrible time. But she is right that you learn things as your career progresses. People do make mistakes. Maybe you cross lines. So she obviously has learned. Would I have preferred that she said this in a normal video or just address the fans directly rather than singing it? Yes. Because again, she's making light of something that people are taking very seriously. So it's obvious that she really isn't taking it that seriously, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's obvious she was just trying to stand out and be different. Like at this rate, I think if you had written handwritten letters and sent them out to your fans, that would have been better than whatever this is. Obviously, I don't send those to children, but if she didn't want to send out letters, she should have been using stamps.com. Now, when every person, moment, and penny counts in your business, you can't afford to take any of them for granted. Stamps.com gets it because for the last 25 Five years, they have been helping businesses like yours save time and money. So you can focus on your business knowing that Stamps.com has all your postage needs covered with premium discounts and great rates. Stamps.com is a one-stop shop for all of your shipping and mailing needs, and all you need is a computer and a printer at home. Stamps.com also has huge carrier discounts with up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates, and they automatically tell you the cheapest and fastest shipping options in your area. You can print your own postage right from your home or your office within minutes, and if you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. Here at The Daily Wire, we obviously do not waste any time, and we have been using Stamps.com since 2017. We love them. They make our business run efficiently. You need to try them out as well. So start saving money and time today and go to Stamps.com to check them out. Sign up at Stamps.com slash Cooper for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Again, that is Stamps.com slash Cooper. Just make sure you learn from Colleen's mistakes and you aren't sending any weird stuff to children. All right, let's move on. I haven't done that for years, you see, because I changed my behavior and I took accountability. Another very good thing, if she would just not be singing it. She obviously has turned things around. She hasn't done this in a long time. If she had just said that, I would not be making this video. I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. She's, you know, a mom of three now. She's moved on. People make mistakes. But why do you have a ukulele? <laughs> but that's not very interesting, is it? So let's go on the toxic gossip train. The locomotive's fueled with hateful accusations The toxic gossip train Steam roll over someone's reputation So cringy. And again, you're gonna see me making this point here a lot. Some of the things that she says, they do sound genuine, but they are completely undermined. Number one, by the ridiculousness of her singing and playing the ukulele, but of her constantly going back to saying that these are just rumors, this is just the toxic gossip train. It's like you're saying that this is gossip and these are just rumors, yet you simultaneously just admitted that what you did was weird and you understand. It's like, so are you taking accountability and have you moved on? Or are you pushing the blame on other people and saying that this is just made up? Have some consistency, because I don't know which thing to believe right now. But I'm kind of wanting to believe that maybe you don't really care about this since you are singing and saying that it's all everybody else's fault. The train is made of lies and that person you despise maybe didn't deserve to die, but hey, at least you're having fun. Again, you're saying that they're lies, but you just admitted that what you did actually happened. In all seriousness, I do think it's really important to hold people accountable for their mistakes. Um, you know, we should hope that everyone can learn from their mistakes and grow and change their behavior and be a better person. And this is something that I've always tried to do when I make mistakes, and it's something that I will continue to try to do. What? Oh, you don't care? Oh, okay. Again, she, like, she totally stopped herself. That was a really genuine moment, saying, you know, I do try to take accountability. People make mistakes. And then she cut herself off in the middle of it for this show business nonsense to say, oh, you don't care. No, I actually do care. That's the most compelling part of this video is you saying that you have grown and changed. You have spent your entire career online. Like it's it's difficult sharing your life online when you have you know millions of people watching you. I know from personal experience, I'm interested in that story. And you're immediately cutting yourself off because you want to blame other people. It's like, really? Like you are making the situation worse, sadly. I thought you want me to take accountability. 
that's not the point of your mob mentality, is it? No. Your goal is to ruin the life of the person you despise while you dramatize your lies and monetize their demise. I mean, it is a good point about cancel culture and the mob, and I would, you know, agree with it in most circumstances unless it involves kids. And when it involves kids, it's like, no, I actually do want to know what you were thinking, and I do want to know <laughs> what was going on with those minors. I feel like I can already hear the comments on this video. She's gaslighting, manipulating. Oh, she's a narcissist and a rat. I would never make a mistake like that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that all of you are perfect, so please criticize me. That was also a very manipulative thing to say. Like, I'm sorry I'm feeding into exactly what she said, but saying like, oh, I already know what you're going to say. Oh, I guess we're all perfect. That kid, don't say that again. You're just making it worse. I'm sure you're disappointed in my shitty little song. I know you wanted me to say that I was 100% in the wrong. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not going to take that route of admitting to lies and rumors that you made up for clout. Again, they weren't even made up. It's screenshots and you admitted that it happened at the beginning of the video. That's what's so confusing. You said you behaved inappropriately and you've learned and you've moved on, but actually they're just rumors and lies people made up for clout. All of it exists online. That's the great and terrible part of being online. So are you actually taking accountability or are you not? I want to empathize with you. I want to believe that you have changed, become a different person, but you are so caught up with being edgy and getting attention and blaming it on other people that it's totally being undermined. She did some things that I do not like in her past. So everybody gather around cause we're about to attack, but not based on facts, oh no. Your loaded lethal weapon is your fingers on the keys. You don't need any armor when you can hide behind a screen. So True. shoot me down quick in the click and bam. My reputation's deceased. Again, it sucks because I want to empathize and believe with the parts where she's taking accountability. And I also want to like the fact that she's making fun of cancel culture, but I can't do it together. Like make these two separate things. Like I want somebody else to make the song about cancel culture where screenshots do not exist, where video evidence does not exist. And I want you to actually acknowledge that you have grown, that you have changed, that, you know, being online is hard, whatever you're going to say, but doing them together makes both of them just terrible. It makes me not want to agree with any of it. And I hate that she's the one that's saying this stuff about cancel culture. It's like, really? <laughs> Please, no, not you. It's like, what's that meme where it's like the worst person you know makes a good point? It's like, damn it, damn it, Colleen. <laughs> I wanted to take a minute to talk about that girl Miranda sings. You know the one. Yeah, her. Uh, she's PG-13. It says that on my website, and it's always been that way. And that's why you won't find my videos on the YouTube Kids app anyway. And that is a very good point. And I did not know that she was actually PG-13 and that she had that on her website. And obviously, it is up to the parents to discern whether something is appropriate for their kids. Like, that does fall on the parents to vet everything. And I'm glad that Colleen actually did say it was PG-13. But... When it comes to her live shows, that was still inappropriate. Those kids were obviously older than 13. Those were, you know, 14, 15, 16 year olds that are obviously very uncomfortable girls that were having their butts shown off on stage, whatever was going on. They were older than 13 and that was still inappropriate. The kids that she was messaging were also older than 13 and that was still inappropriate. So I'm glad that she was not trying to target young people. That is a good thing, like tiny, small children, but still these were minors. I've always relied on parents to decide if they're comfortable with their families watching my YouTube videos or coming to my live shows. And that is an important thing. Like I just said, it is up to the parents. Have I made some jokes in poor taste? Yes. Have I made lots of dumb mistakes? Yes. Am I sad that there are some fans that feel betrayed? Yes. Was my intention to manipulate? No. That is so genuine. Her saying that she has made mistakes, that she has learned, that she thought that she was doing something that was okay. If that was all she said, I think people would understand and say, okay, yeah, we can, you know, scale it back. Like, I don't think that calling her a pedophile, a raging pedophile is the right thing to do. Do I think that she acted inappropriately? Yes. Do I think she should have been more careful knowing that so much of her audience was young people? Absolutely, yes. Do I think that a 30-year-old woman should be able to know the boundaries between herself and teenage fans? Yes. But people do make mistakes. And if she had just taken accountability without all the nonsense, it would be a totally different thing because there are moments of authenticity in this video. It doesn't really matter what my intention was because it seems as though everyone's already decided on that. Again, she's ruining it for herself. Let me tell you, it's not very fun to have millions of people all over the world call you the most vile, horrendous, disgusting, life-ruining words that a person can be called, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't matter that these things aren't true. Uh, everyone just believes 
that you are the type of person who manipulates and abuses children. The only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer, I'm just a loser who didn't understand I shouldn't respond to fans. And I'm not a predator, even though a lot of you think so, because five years ago I made a fart joke. Again, I still like what she's saying. I just wish she wasn't singing it. I never had any bad intentions. It's so sad at the end. But I do feel like shit. The toxic gossip train. Okay, and then that's the end of it. And then she just keeps singing about the toxic. Like, every time she makes a good point where you actually feel like you are getting to the core of it. Like her talking about growing up and changing, like that was one of the most authentic and genuine moments in any kind of like public apology I've actually seen. Because usually they're like, oh, I'll learn, I'll listen, I didn't do, whatever. And then she completely disrupts it by every time she cuts herself off and goes, oh no, it's just toxic. Everybody's making up lies. Just do what you're doing and take accountability and let your fans decide for themselves. They are adults, hopefully now. I think most of them are probably adults. They can listen to your apology. They can listen to your reasoning. I think people have empathy. They know that people make mistakes. I think that they can see that you were not intending to, hopefully. I hope you were not intending to. I was convinced. But then you make it all about yourself. It's just, it's very weird and it makes me, ugh, oh, I'm just angry. It's infuriating and I wish I was not so infuriated is basically how I feel in this video. I do want to read the comments obviously though because guys, she's been trending since yesterday. When I first watched the video, it had 30 thousand views and I was like there's no way this doesn't blow up there's no way people don't see this and then it went on Twitter it went on TikTok it was everywhere she was at the top of the trending page on Twitter not just on my like for you but just of Twitter Colleen was what was trending somebody commented and said I guess she just did what her name says Miranda's gonna sing if Miranda's gonna do anything it is certainly going to be singing somebody else said imagine her team crying screaming begging pleading her not to post this and she was like hold on wait no I can fix this just let me sing again it's just so Ah, the worst comment I saw and my favorite comment was from Shu on head. And she said, Colleen, stop playing in A minor. That's how you got here in the first place. <laughs> Nine out of 10 people online from what I have seen hate this and not even because of the content. They are so distracted by how cringe this is and how ridiculous it is that they're not even focusing on what she's saying. And I think that that is a huge problem. Another person said, this ain't all too well 10 minute version girl, you groomed kids. So obviously people are not convinced. Somebody else quoted her and said, this video won't change anyone's mind about me. <laughs> At least you got one thing right, LOL. Another person said, I have never been a fan, luckily, but this makes me despise you, ma'am. What a terrible, terrible response. Now, even though Twitter is having a field day with this and most people under her video are very, very unhappy. Some of her fans are sticking by her and they're being positive. Like one person said, Colleen, be strong in who you are. We know your heart. We too can see through the lies. This response was spot on gutsy and true. It sounds like my dad commenting on something that was so gutsy. It's one of his favorite words. Somebody else says, you are loved, you are valued. We know you are only human. Do not let them dim your light. I think the most important part of that comment is we know you are only human. That's probably the only part that I really care about. Now, there were other commenters pointing out how she was right in that nothing she could ever do would satisfy everyone, which is true. That is the world that we live in. If you get accused of something, you're always gonna have people that are angry at you. You will never please everyone. Understanding that is very, very freeing because it, you know, <laughs> you can just move on with your life because you know that people are always gonna have some problem. And this is probably why she decided to sing because, you know, F it, she thinks everybody is out to get her. And it's true that you can never please everyone, but in this circumstance, I still think that she could have pleased more people and been more genuine if she had just said, you know, yes, I was dumb. It was inappropriate. I learned this was awful. I'm really, really sorry. I've taken accountability. There's a reason why you have not seen me do any of that for the last 10 years. I'm a mom now. I have changed. I would have watched that and gone, oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Like you were, you know, a dumb chick on the internet who made mistakes because you blew up and you didn't know what you were doing. You didn't have any guidance and you were lonely and thought that it was okay. And obviously now you know that it's not because people make mistakes. And now parents know, don't watch old Miranda Sings videos with your kids. But instead she chose to sing and interrupt taking accountability and her own apology with blaming it on other people every single time she tried to be authentic. And I think this comment sums it up well. They said, it's like she wanted to have an iconic apology video, but didn't actually care about apologizing. Like she wanted the attention. She didn't want to fully take responsibility. She wanted to be talked about but there are obviously moments in there where you could see that she was hurt and that she does feel some remorse. I'm guessing that she does. And I think that that is the biggest thing that I took away from this because yes, everybody does make mistakes. People grow and change, especially if you are you know, famous, you have watched somebody grow up online. Obviously you're gonna see them change. You're gonna see them make mistakes. Fame is hard to deal with. It's hard when you have people watching your every move. I understand that, but she still acted inappropriately with children. 
and she obviously hurt fans. She said it herself, she knows that she did. And there were brief moments in there where she genuinely seemed sorry about that. And I felt that. And in other points, the situation just sounded sad. Like she said, many years ago, I used to message my fans, but not in a creepy way. Like a lot of you were trying to suggest, it was more of a loser kind of way where I was still just trying to be besties with everybody. That still doesn't make the situation any better because even if you thought and still think that that was harmless, you were still a weird, lonely adult communicating with children online. That is still something to take accountability for. Even if you were not intending it to be bad, you cannot look at something just based on the intention. You have to look at the consequences and how people felt. In my opinion, the moments of sadness and remorse were completely overshadowed by the singing, the ukulele, and her blaming the toxic manipulation train, the locomotion of lies, whatever it was, and people just being out to get her. That is not an apology. That is not you actually being genuine. That is you wanting attention and being bitter and trying to avoid taking responsibility. And that is not a good look. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the comment section and that you maybe even learned something new. If you have not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode.